Okay, hello everyone. This is Jake Hamby. I'm here with the uh, VacStation 4000 Model 90, and I wanted to record um, booting it up from a power on state and also uh, record. Uh, looks like the SCSI controller driver is actually timed out here. Um, my last video, I was bragging a little bit about the um, Samsung SSD and how well it works. Uh, it seems to, in fact, work, but it's much slower than it ought to be. There are some issues with the driver. Um, the Ethernet driver also has a occasional, I'll see, a transmit a lot, error um, restart on that. So anyway, let's boot this up real quick. Uh, power off. Now, uh, the VAC station, uh, it actually doesn't use very much power. Um, so the power switch is over here. I'm going to put the camera on um, these uh, little debug LEDs, which are fun to watch. So when it's powered on uh, in idle, it uses about 65 watts uh, running full tilt, uh, maybe 68 to 70 watts So uh, with the SSD. So it's, it's really not bad at all. Um, over here on the screen, you can see the... Uh, the little boot sequence, it has this nice little bar graph that draws, uh, which is kind of cool. Um, so anyway, I have 128 megs of ECC RAM, which takes uh, the bulk of the startup time to check. Uh, that's maxed out. Um, what can I say about that? ECC RAM is interesting because it's basically the same as parity RAM. Um, it's nine bits instead of eight or, or 36 bits instead of 32 uh, wide. So for each uh, every eight bits, you get one more. And um, with the uh, less powerful memory controllers, uh, including a lot of PCs and uh, of this era and even the older VAC stations, uh, basically it would be an even or odd parity. And so if one of the bits gets flipped by a... Um, cosmic ray or something like that, then you would just know that there was an error. You wouldn't be able to fix it. Well, the interesting thing about ECC, uh, using some clever clever bit arithmetic, it's able to actually correct for a single bit error um, with uh, by using four bits um, for every 32. So uh, the VAC station, uh, this particular model, it, it, it uses a memory controller that was originally designed for one of the, what they call the big VACs, is the big uh, uh, kind of commercial refrigerator size uh, machines. So uh, that's pretty cool, actually. Uh, it means um, it's, it's, if there's a, a crash or something, it's probably not because of a, a memory corruption error or something like that. Um, the other interesting thing about the startup here is uh, the 71 megahertz. When I originally bought this machine off of eBay in, in 2000, uh, it had an older version of the boot firmware on it, and, and it wasn't actually capable of seeing hard drives bigger than about two gigs. There was some sort of arithmetic wraparound or something, and so you wouldn't have been able to see that 120 gigs, the actual size of the SSD that's in there. Uh, I was able to find on the internet instructions how to flash the firmware. Uh, there's uh, some nice sites that have uh, documentation for this model. Uh, Digital was very diligent about uh, publishing technical journals are describing these things, and they're fairly proud of this particular model, so there's a whole issue dedicated to it and to the NVAX CPU that's uh, that's inside of it. So anyway, I was able to find the latest version of the firmware, and after some um, fooling around with the proprietary deck boot um, stuff you have to install uh, the instead of uh, boot P or... Um, PXE or something, something modern like that. It it needs um it needs a bunch of uh, weird kind of Vax sort of boot stuff. But I was able to boot it some sort of embedded v VMS uh, uh, boot file that had the Flash firmware uh, updater, and it did in fact successfully update. So now, uh, if we move back over to here, you'll see. Uh, the, the the LEDs, you can look up and see what each of the positions, it's finished the memory test. It's going to play a little tune, which is kind of fun to hear, so I'll, I'll shut up for a sec.
Okay, so that was uh, the little startup tone. I think the little kind of sad three beeps at the end may have something to do with the fact that the uh, clock calendar um, NV RAM chip in here has a dead battery. Uh, you, it's a it's an obsolete part. Um, it's got a couple hundred bytes of RAM or something in it, and it's a, a, a sort of a, a real time clock to keep the time and date when it's turned off. And uh, I was able to find uh, uh, several spares uh, used off of eBay, literally from Shenzhen, China. Um, and I was kind of hoping against hope that they might have working. Uh, batteries in them. Of course, the battery is long dead, but the chip still works. So anyway, uh, without the chip, uh, I wouldn't get this far. I wouldn't boot. But with the chip installed into dead battery, it's it's fine. It's just the clock's wrong. So basically, I just have to manually uh, type in the hard drive to boot from. And then since it's NetBSD, uh, if this were VMS, it would be annoying because it would ask me to type in the time and date. But since this is NetBSD, it's actually a little bit smarter. It knows, uh, it'll say something in the boot message about time of year clock being preposterous. Oh, by the way, those extra little hex digits there, that's not part of the normal NetBSD boot sequence. That's a little local debug option I added to kind of see what the bytes are in that um, in that dead memory. Anyway, it says, you know, clock not mark valid. So basically it uses the time that I last shut it down as the starting point for the clock, July 5th, uh, as you can see. And uh, then uh, I'm running net NTP, uh, NTP daemon. So it will happily um, sync up the clock. And one of the nice things about these systems, this, this machine probably cost, uh, if you had maxed out the RAM like this, 128 megs, it would have cost $25,000 in uh, mid 90s money. So you know, $30,000 today, you could you could buy a nice car uh, then or now with um, with that sort of money. So uh, it was exceedingly well built. Uh, you could imagine for the time. And one of the things that's uh, interesting to me when you run NTP, there's a file uh, slash var slash db slash NTP uh, dot drift or NTPD dot drift. Uh, depending on your your OS, the, the file name and path may be different, but uh, it will show you to the um, uh, microseconds uh, what uh, how fast or slow your clock is. So if it's zero, then your clock is perfectly accurate. Um, you know, it's not running fast or slow. So as a as kind of a general measure of things, what I like to do is. Um, Look at that file on, and and then you kind of get an idea. I've noticed with you know your typical PC, it'll be a uh, plus twenty or minus thirty or something like that. It'll it'll usually be between plus and minus fifty parts per million. Um, with these machines, it usually uh, is even closer, like plus or minus one part per million or plus or minus ten parts per million. Uh, so that's that's kind of interesting, you know, uh, to have a machine like this. You put um, basically you you can see the hard drive was really the only moving part that's going to wear out. Uh, so something like this machine could sit in a closet somewhere and run for, uh, you know, years on end. Uh, that's it's pretty cool. I, I'm, I'm uh, happy to work on this, uh, these machines and keep them running uh, as a demonstration that technology just uh, does not become inherently obsolete because there's something better available. It's, it's um, you know, you, you got to kind of look at these machines as uh, what they're capable of doing. And uh, it's a fun hobby. And, um, you know, it's nice to see NetBSD and, and the VAX are, are, are both um, still being supported and uh, run great. This has been Jake Hamby. I will upload this now.